Jeep just hit 90,000 miles. It's idling right now. You can tell I didn't catch it right at 90, but by the time I got home, um, it rolled over to 90,000 and one mile. So I don't know, just a cool little milestone there, 90K, uh, road to 100K. See what happens when we get to, get to 100K. Anyways. To open up my tailgate to grab my tire patch kit for um, a friend. And um, I look under here and it's just full of water. It's not water in here, because I think I have the drain plug out in this one. But my Jeep kind of sits on a hill like this. So I think the water comes in on the soft top and just kind of like, I don't know, makes its way somehow into here. As you can tell, this is just full of water. That's crazy. Pull this plug out. It's a good bit of water. Still won't be able to get all of it uh, just because it's sitting kind of like this. It's a little bit collected under here, so I'm gonna leave that out for a couple days, I guess. Just got that fresh pre cut window tent I'm online. So, this is gonna be for the JKU, the Commando. This is gonna be for the front windows because you guys know we told you um, we did end up getting into some legal trouble with the front tent. So, that had to be removed. This is going to be legal tent and this is going to be pre-cut strips. So it should be pretty easily. I'm going to pull the Jeep in and then start disassembling stuff and then try to slap it on. Okay. Yeah, guys, <laughs> I'm not a, uh, I'm not a professional window tinter. Um, and I realize that I've never really have had confidence tinting windows. I mean, I've done it a couple times in the past. Um, as you can see, the pre-cut strips make it a lot easier, but it's still like not that easy. I do have to give a lot of credit to the, uh, the guys who professionally do it because there actually is a lot of stuff that goes, a lot of preparation and a lot of methods to be used. And a lot of stuff that really makes it happen, you know, as a quality job to just like not having dirt or bubbles and stuff behind the the film is also you know what a huge thing so as you can tell i got the window rolled down like an inch so you can see um it's gonna help just a little bit not being so perfectly clear like the windshield is but uh yeah i mean i gotta be honest it was only 15 bucks so i mean it's it, it's a jeep <laughs> that's all i have to say you know if it was like a nice car or something like that, then I would probably, for sure, definitely um, take it to my local guy to get, you know, get it done, tinted there. But um, yeah, that's just, window tinting is a whole nother special skill, I guess you could call it. Um, takes a lot of patience and earns a lot of respect for sure in my book. All right, so I've got pretty much most of it squeegeed out. It's uh, it's still got like some water and stuff, obviously. I think it takes a couple days for that to um, really like air out. But looking at it from the outside, you guys can see left a little space up top. Um, not gonna lie, it's not too bad. The streaks and stuff that you guys are seeing is um scratches on like the actual glass of the window from mud uh being trapped in these seals right here uh that's why i usually try to get a pressure washer in there and you really get that rinsed out yeah i mean it's honestly not too bad it looks pretty good so pretty happy with it um probably gonna take a couple days to or a few days maybe a week um using my method i guess to really air out and get the air bubbles and stuff like that out so a little diy there saved a few bucks definitely would not recommend doing this on like any type of nice car uh, it's a jeep so you know it's not perfect 
just window tint, <laughs> not a big deal. I mean, you guys know this is also my daily driver too, so I uh, really need to have some type of tint. So keeping it all legal here in the state that we live in. So gonna make sure we get the windshield nice and clean, all that good stuff. But you guys can see the little comparison there. It's not too bad. So won't be like a complete fish bowl when I'm driving around. So that's nice. I can uh, pick my nose at a red light and do whatever, you know, not be as concerned. What's up guys? Um, this is another day here. You guys can see we have the doors off and all that good stuff. Uh, Cause I think it's supposed to rain or storm for like the next two weeks straight. So, um, I mean, could it even be possibly more than that? But we're just trying to take advantage of this right now. Uh, basically, a little update here. Everything's been doing awesome. Uh, just changed the oil with the recommended 520. Uh, you know, the, the old uh, reliable, mobile one fully synthetic nothing too crazy or um extra about it just you know no, no power filter all that good stuff so just trying to keep everything healthy but um we did seem to notice uh, we have been listening really closely to the engine lately when it warms up it has a slight lifter tick i believe so and that's just something we've kind of been paying attention to it goes away obviously uh when you rev it i think it's uh pretty serious if it like goes with the idle or like the speed of the rpms so i think um we're not too deep in the water just yet but something that we did notice a few days ago uh we're trying to catch it before it's too late but yeah like i said it uh it only happens when it warms up so like on startup everything sounds normal and fine and then it uh you know the idles drop a little bit um when the engine warms up and that's when it starts to have a little bit of a tick noise um it sounds like it's coming from the driver's side um and you can hear it from like the bottom like if you just stick your head down here i have not checked um opened the hood and took off the engine cover just yet we're gonna take it to one of our local guys he is very knowledgeable um he's a really awesome guy and we're gonna go and get his opinion on this because uh, he knows a lot more about um just vehicles in general so uh we're gonna go see what he thinks and we're gonna go from there. But um, I think worst case scenario, we're probably gonna have to invest in some roller knockers or whatever they're called, camshaft knockers, uh, whatever you call them, because those bearings go bad. Um, hopefully it's gonna be the one furthest back. So it'd be a lot easier to slip the camshaft up, slip it out, uh, put a new one in and then be noise free. A lot of these are happening low miles, like 5,000 miles, 50,000 miles. So it's just, uh, it's not just the, the Jeeps either, it's in every 3.6. So manufacturer or mechanical defect there on 3.6. So hopefully we can get this taken care of and it's not gonna escalate um, anymore until we can you know, get fully prepared to uh, take on the task. Jake pulled up uh, JK Gumby Instagram. This is the first time I'm seeing it right here with you guys. So it's an 08, 2008 Jeep Wrangler Limited Sahara. I think it said it's got about 80K miles on it now. Really low miles for the year. My Jeep has um, 90,000 and it's a 2013. So one of my favorite colors, we actually almost bought 
the same exact color, an 08 Rubicon, but we got the Commando instead. So we got some, uh, you know, grabber tires. This is just how it came when he bought it. But uh, he has plans to go and visit RPM Extreme, do an LS swap, all that good stuff. Terraflex, two and a half, three and a half, I think a three and a half inch lift. All that good stuff. Keeping it clean. It's got the gray hard top, which is cool. Not all of them come with that. Pretty sweet. Definitely an awesome Jeep. Awesome color. Paints in great condition. I'm gonna show you guys here on the interior here in a second. Get you a better look. update here on the Jeep. Uh, thought I'd make a quick little video just because I'm driving to class uh, right now. So take advantage of one of these days here. Got about an hour drive. Um, 37s are doing awesome. Still enjoying them. Uh, there's just really something about them. You know, like if you're trying to utilize all the factory systems, stock axles, power steering, all that stuff. It's definitely uh, more enjoyable having 37s as a daily driver, especially on the interstate, spending a lot more time with it, just how it handles, you know, like being pushed around, uh, like by the wind or how the road changes, bumps, stuff like that. Uh, 40s are definitely a lot. They were, uh, they were mostly for like around town driving, but uh, that's just, you know, our preference and what we're doing right now so uh, for right now this thing is our daily driver this is this is awesome this is great for a daily driver so you know cruising right now going up a hill had to um, downshift to fifth but it's pretty cool we're um, chilling in sixth fifth gear all that good stuff so just handling it great you know eventually one day doing the one tons and you know, huge tires, definitely not gonna be suitable for a daily driver. Daily driver wise, might have two Jeeps, you know, like have one on 35s or 37s, and uh, you know, one for a crawler on tons and all that good stuff. As you guys saw, I took a little trip to Home Depot because I got this fire extinguisher. It's an auto fire extinguisher, so it says for automobile usage, which I don't know the difference. <laughs> I'm not a fire fighter or fire marshal expert, but I uh, popped the box, made sure that it was gonna fit for this new mounts that we got. 
So it should be pretty sweet. Got a strap on the bottom to tuck in to hold it from sliding out the bottom. Uh, it's the same length, fits awesome. Uh, it's only like 20 bucks, so I mean, can't afford not to have it.